If you're wondering what was that about, it was pretty much me not having an idea for a proper intro. Hi there, what's going on guys? This is Flare Dark Slayer, and I hope that you're having a better day than me. You're probably wondering what's the idea behind this video. Well, let's summarize this up. I bought myself a brand new mic. It wasn't exactly a cheap one. However, I have one problem with it. You know, besides of streaming myself for a few hours and showing my lack of personality, I realized that I didn't really have much use for it. That actually annoyed me and I've decided to do something about it. And this video is pretty much a start. Before we start actual modding creation thing, let's talk a bit about how DMC5 operates in the first place. If you visited DMC5's installation folder at least once, you probably noticed that there is a one huge file inside there that has a size of 31 gigabytes. This is the main package file for the whole game. Everything that you see within DMC5 comes pretty much from this huge file. This is how the game works normally. However, there is also another way, as I would like to call it, a failsafe. Imagine for a moment that the game loads up, um, for example, Dante's hair model file. What does it do? The game goes and checks up re underscore chunk underscore triple o dot pack file, the main file used for the whole game, and then it checks its structure. First it goes into natives folder inside that pack file, then into subfolder called x64, then to the player character folder, player folder, yada yada yada, until it finally bumps into the model file, actually the mesh file. Now let's do small thing and let's change uh, p in the player subfolder into b. What does that do? Even the slightest change to the path string makes it invalid. The game is coded in such a way that it has to have specific path strings for specific files. If the path string is invalid, then the game doesn't load the file from the pack archive and instead goes back one step into the installation folder and it searches for content there. This is where the mods come in. And in that situation, it's pretty much simple. If the game finds the file, it loads it up. If it doesn't, it will most likely crash. Remember Greek mythology and its saying, in the beginning there was chaos? Well, when it comes to DMC5 modding, in the beginning there was Fluffy Quack. Fluffy Quack is a guy that made a lot of conversion tools for Capcom games, both that work on RE Engine and its predecessor, Empty Framework. And when it comes to DMC5, you're gonna need two of his tools. Actually, three. Two and a half. Actually, one of them is actually two-parter. Anyway, you will need Fluffy's RE tool and also Mod Manager. Download links for both will be available in the description. Also, there is one more file that needs to be downloaded, which is pretty much a list of files that RE tool has to unpack from the pack file. Consider it pretty much like giving program a map of what it's supposed to get. Link to that will be included too. This part doesn't contain much bullshitting. Unpacking files, plain and simple. Actually, there are two things that you have to consider before unpacking this thing. First things first, you have to make sure you have at least 50 gigabytes of additional free space on your drive for the unpacked content. And the other thing is to actually correct the batch file responsible for the extraction since it's not actually set up right away for DMC5. You see, after downloading the RE tool archive and unpacking it, by the way, it is required to unpack the tool into DMC5's installation folder if you want to unpack its content, you will see that along with the main exe file, there will be also multiple batch files, each responsible for different tasks. The texture batches are responsible for texture conversion, which is something that will be covered later. Extract pack, on the other hand, is what we will focus on right now. Alright, so let's do this. You're gonna need three files. From RE Tool Archive, you will need extract pack.bat file and RE Tool.exe file 
And for the third file, you will need DMC pack names release that list file, which is previously mentioned map of what uh, the RE tool is actually supposed to unpack. You put all those three files into DMC5's installation folder. Now get ready because this is actually the part where you have to use your brain. I think Dante would probably kill himself at this point. As I mentioned before, RE tool is not set up right away to unpack Devil May Cry 5's files, or at least I've got a release that is not set up right away. And we are going to change that through a simple notepad. Open the extract pack file with notepad or simply go for the edit button. Now there are two ways of doing this, but both come down to one thing actually. You can either modify the batch file and change re tool pack names release dot list into the name of the downloaded file, which is dmc5 pack names release dot list, or you can simply rename the downloaded list file and change dmc5 into re2. Don't forget about underscores. You can choose whichever option you want, but the bottom line is pretty much the same, which is both the names in the notepad and the name of the list file have to be the exact same thing, so that the program can pick up the thing to use for the unpacking. Then you just drag and drop the main pack file onto the extract batch. You take responsibility for your actions and wait for the program to do its magic. Depending on the speed of your PC, the unpacking itself should take around 30 minutes, maybe more. So, in the meantime, get some frozen yogurt or something. If the unpacking goes without any mistakes, there should be brand new RE underscore chunk underscore triple O folder. Not a pack file, but actual folder with unpacked content. And that's pretty much it when it comes to unpacking. I've shown you the door, I've shown you how to open it. Now I'm going to show you how to go through it. Let me make this one thing clear. You didn't just unpack the whole thing so that you get DMC5 content. You have to learn about its folder structure. Why is that? Because DMC5 mods that you are about to create must have the same folder structure and the modded files must be in the same locations as the original content within the pack file. I know this may probably not make much sense for the time being, but I can assure you, you're gonna pick up on that over time. Remember all the mumbo jumbo about past strings that I talked about earlier? Now let's talk a bit about Fluffy Manager. This manager makes the whole process automated and it really takes like one press of a button, literally, to install mods. Mod is available on the list, we do one click of a button on its name, we install it, and the way Fluffy Manager works is that it makes the path strings for the files that the mod is supposed to modify invalid, and then thanks to previously mentioned failsafe, Mod Manager installs modded content, well, it's actually pretty much copy and paste, into game's installation folder to be specific into the natives folder. And our job is to make sure that such folder structure exists for the mod and the file that we want to modify is within the same folder structure. So let's try and do just that before I turn into a broken record, all right? Let's make Dante's code green, just for the test. Almost forgot, keep in mind that there are multiple versions of Dante. Uh, one is for Prolog, one is for a one month later version. And we are going to change the code for Prolog Dante, who appears in Mission 10. You know, the one with short hair. When modifying textures for Devil May Cry 5, you have to take into consideration that you have to actually change two textures in two different locations. Why is that? Well, that's because one texture is low quality and the other is high quality. And my understanding for this is that depending on the camera distance from the object uh, the game loads up different textures so if you're close to the object then it shows one texture if you're far away from the object it shows another and if you want for your texture mod to work 100 percent you have to modify both of those the name for the file stays the same for both textures. In case of Dante's prologue code, it's plo100 underscore code underscore albm dot text dot 11. It's the same for both files. However, the difference is in the location of, of the files. The first location mentioned on the screen, which is natives 
x64 character folder is where the low quality texture resides. In native's uh, x64 streaming location, the second one, is where the high quality texture is. Personally, I don't like wasting time on modifying both high and low quality textures, so what I do, and it is possible, and it also doesn't cause any game crashes, is that I simply modify high quality texture and then I use it as a replacement for a low quality. Makes things easier. Alright, so let's start. Go to the newly unpacked re underscore chunk underscore triple o folder, then to natives x64 streaming character player Dante body and then get the texture. If you want you can create a separate folder for any texture editing and you can simply copy texture there. Now we're gonna get our e-tool again and we're going to use its texture conversion option. When it comes to the batch files, you only need the first one, which is textureconv.bat, which is a batch file designed for a single texture conversion. The others are designed for conversion of all textures within folder or subfolders. Once you have retool and the batch file, simply drag and drop texture onto the batch file, wait for the conversion, like not even a second, and congratulations, you've just converted text texture into DDS texture. Now this is where the tough right starts because now you actually need some image editing software that allows modifying DDS images with BC7 type of compression. What I use is Photoshop version CS6 with Intel TextureWorks plugin. There's also another tool called Compressinator. However, I don't really have any idea how it works as I record this video. So for the time being, the only thing that I can do is to show you how I do stuff. As far as I'm aware, there should be still some CS6 installers around the internet that allow for a 30-day trial. So it's kind of a temporary solution if you, if you feel like getting it. I'll try to include some download links in the description. As for the TextureWorks plugin, you can download it from a separate website. And as far as I'm aware, there should be also instructions on how to install this for a Photoshop. If you decide to go for a Photoshop, this is pretty much what you're going to see. You open up a DDS file with Photoshop CS6. The first thing that you're going to see is two options for MIP maps and for alpha channel. Choose the first option to load transparency as alpha channel. This will allow reading texture properly. After that, just do whatever you want or feel like it. Once you're done, save the texture. A new window will appear for the texture settings. Those are final settings for the texture save. You set up specific settings. Texture type color plus alpha, compression type BC7, 8 BPP, fine, sRGB, DX11 plus. As for the MIP maps, choose auto generate. Confirm and that should save the modified DDS file. To make sure that the texture is saved properly, you can always check its modification date in the folder. Once the texture is saved, simply drag and drop the newly modified DDS file into the batch file once again, it works both ways, and that should pretty much convert it back into text file. And that is pretty much it for the basics. Now let's try and put this into the game. Alright, so we have the main texture ready, we're going to use it both for the high and low quality. So now the only thing that we have to do is to create a mod package, which is pretty much a folder structure according to the original content.
Once you have all the folders and files set up, all you have to do is copy the whole mod folder into the mod manager. Into games, DMC5, mods, and this is where you paste the whole folder. If all goes well, it should appear on the mod list within the manager itself. Once it appears, just click on it, install it, and keep an eye on the lower left side of the window. If you see copied two files and two invalidated path strings, that means the mod got installed successfully. All you have to do at this point is pretty much see if there are any changes within the game. And in my case, it works just as intended. Kinda looks like shit, but this is exactly why I made this tutorial, so that you can do a way better job. Well, I guess that's it for this tutorial. I bet there is a lot more stuff to cover up. But before I touch anything more, I have to do a research of my own. I hope this tutorial didn't bore you to death, and if you decided to stay and endure it until the very end, well, congratulations and kudos to you. You're one hell of a survivor. But nonetheless, if you ever decide to go for DMC5 modding, I hope that at least half of this tutorial will be helpful to you. Who knows, maybe you will come up with something fun for yourself or for other people to play with. This was Flare Dark Slayer, and may the dark keep your mind clear. Take care. Cheers.